Goalkeepers, one of the most scrutinised positions in football. Today we're going to be ranking them from worst to best. Let's go. So guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. What I thought we'd do for today's video is revisit one we did last year, go over every championship goalkeeper and put them into the following tier list. So a goalkeeper is either a bit of a clanger merchant, meaning that they can't really be trusted and they will throw one into the back of the net every once in a while. Average, so they're all right at this level. Good, very good or elite. That top elite tier, I've decided to go with my top five goalkeepers in the championship. So do get your comments in the comments down below. Where would you place goalkeepers at your club and who do you think are the top five goalkeepers in the league? We'll see if our opinions align up for this one. So if you do come to enjoy, make sure to leave a like. But without any further ado, let's hop into this one. So we'll start out with Preston North End's goalkeeper, Declan Rudd, who I think comes into around the middle of the pile with this sort of video. If you were to ask me a year or two ago where would I place Declan Rudd, it would have probably been in the average or maybe even clanging merchant category when he first arrived he didn't have the greatest of times here he picked up an injury and then when he did get back into the squad made a couple of quite high profile mistakes no more so than that one away at Birmingham where Keaton Belt scored from like the halfway line but since then in last season I'd say he's probably in our top three performance for the season and at this level I think he's a decent goalkeeper next up we then go to Bartos Bilkowski a really interesting one from his time at Ipswich I think that most people would have had him in that most consistent category for all the years of service he had there he then obviously Obviously had that time of tailing off towards the end with that final season when Ipswich got relegated but has really resurrected his career back at Millwall now. Last season was brilliant, this season I think it's been good, has made a couple of mistakes here and there I think that Bilkowski is a bit prone to that every once in a while but I'm going to throw him into that very good category, I think he's dependable at this level and definitely in the upper sort of tier or two. Jamal Blatt been a Rotherham United, it's been a fairly small sample size of games that we've seen him in action so far this season but he's back in the championship now having previously had a couple of loan spells there. And I think he's alright at this level. He's faced the sixth most amount of shots so far this season in the Championship and has kept Rotherham in some games. But equal to that, can be cut out on the other occasion. I'd put him around the sort of average category. He's alright at this level. Next up we go to Ben Hamer. Now this is a tough one to judge because to be fair to him, he has improved this season for Huddersfield so far. However, last season for Derby, I think he probably was among one of the worst in the league. In terms of errors leading to goals from goalkeepers, I think he was leading the way alongside Sluger from Luton Town. And even this season, when he has improved, there have still been mistakes in his game. I mean, the second goal against Preston, where he tried to claim the ball, and ultimately it fell to Alan Brown for him to tuck away. The second one against Birmingham was a little bit weird as well, where he sort of moved out the way the ball come in. As I've said, he has improved, and if he keeps this up over a full season and manages to show this consistency, then I'd, I'd consider moving him up a few tiers. But for the time being, I still think he's got a bit of a clanger in him. Roos from Derby, another one who I'm not really the biggest fan of. I'd probably throw him around that average tier as well. But one Derby goalkeeper who I am a massive fan of is David Marshall. I think this one was an absolute bargain they picked up from Wigan. He ended last season with Wigan really strongly and what he's shown at Derby so far this season, I don't think they'd have as many points on the board as they currently do without Marshall. You just need to look at some of the games where they have picked up points. Marshall's come up with massive performances. Some of the reflex saves he made away at Norwich was something else. I'd put him into that very good tier. I rate David Marshall quite highly. Coming to give Lavin Rovers, probably one who they've missed in recent matches. I think he does give that back line quite a bit of confidence and impressed in his first few matches at Rovers obviously he has been that injured recently but it's because we're working off such a small sample size it's tough to put him into this placement really but for the time being I'm going to throw him into that decent tier because I have liked what I've seen from him so far but if he continues to develop his game there's no reason why he wouldn't move up a tier. Next up then to Ben Foster and he is going to make into that elite category. For me he is one of the top five goalkeepers in the league. I think you can make an argument for being him being the best really. Still very much the Premier League quality goalkeeper. I think you can make an argument for throughout his career Ben Foster's been quite under rated really is an English goalkeeper he's always been quite overlooked but if you look into some of the performances he's had so far this season for Watford the guy's been next level he's kept Watford in several matches come up with some wonderful saves I mean against Wickham he was top class Blackburn Rovers he was unbelievable saved the penalty in that game and made some other wonder saves he also seems like a really friendly guy as well if you've not watched his YouTube channel definitely go check it out but Ben Foster makes it into that elite tier no questions asked next up then to Marcus Bettinelli it's Middlesbrough alongside Watford who currently boasts the best defensive record in the league having considered just five goals so far this 
season. I think that Bettinelli is a decent keeper at this level. However, out of all the goalkeepers who have started every game of the season so far, Marcus Bettinelli has faced the fewest amounts of shots so far this season, and that's a testament to how rigid Borough are defensively. You know, he's got that solid foundation in front of him. But whenever he has been called into action, he's been decent. His time at Fulham ended a little bit sour. He did start to tail off there a little bit, and obviously Rodak overtook him as that number one there last season. But from his time at Borough so far, I'd say he's a decent goalkeeper. Next up to Nottingham Forest, Bryce Samba. Now on last year's video, I did have him in those top five goalkeepers in the league, and at one point he definitely was that. However, since the resumption of football and after lockdown, his form just seems to have tailed off for whatever reason. Longham Forest fans, would you agree with that in the comments down below? Because at the start of last season, the guy was absolutely something else. But as everyone else in that Forest squad dropped off, so did Samba's form seemingly. I'm still going to throw him into that very good category because I do think that on his day he is fantastic, but I don't think he's in that top five category anymore. Next up to Barnsley is Bradley Collins. Now, Barnsley have an interesting situation whereby they have two quite good up and coming English goalkeepers. They got Bradley Collins and Jack Walton. Out of the two, it's probably Collins that I prefer personally. Barnsley fans, let me know down below who do you prefer out of the two. And although Collins hasn't played all too much football this season, I'd throw him into that decent tier. Joel Lundley for QPR is a goalkeeper who's really been struggling for confidence recently. He did actually go out on loan to Gillingham where he did quite well, so I'd be interested if that picks his confidence up. But from the games we saw in the Championship, whenever he seemed to get his chance last year, things didn't go his way, did the Originally for QPR when he was stepping in to be that replacement for Alex Smithies, he was actually pretty decent for them. But for whatever reason, his confidence went, and for the time being, I'd probably throw him into that bottom tier. But if he does get that confidence back and show the form he was doing in the 18-19 season, I think, there's no reason to say why he can't build himself back up. Speaking of goalkeepers who have managed to build themselves back up, Simon Sluger from Luton Town had a really tough time when he originally arrived at Luton. When I did my video last year, he was in that bottom tier. He was dropping clanger after clanger at the start of the season. And if you remember that one at Derby away, he had an absolute horror show in that game last season. But since the resumption of football and after lockdown, I actually think he's been one of Luton's more consistent performers, pulling off some good saves. I think he was probably helped a little bit by coming out of the firing line and sitting on the bench for a little bit. For, but for the time being, I'd definitely move him up a tier. Next up to Norwich City's Tim Krull. Does he get into my top five goalkeepers in the league? I think he does, you know. I think the wealth of experience that he's got and how well and how much of a consistent performer he's been for Norwich over these last few years, you know, in that Premier League campaign. Everyone seemed to drop their levels apart from Tim Krull. Obviously a penalty save in Wizard. He's already showed that so far this season with that save against Rotherham. And he's also had a string of top performances recently. Tim Krull for me gets into that elite tier. He's one of my top five. Coventry City's Marco Morosi. Another difficult one to judge. Now so far this season he has considered more goals than any other championship goalkeeper as of recording. However, a lot of that can be attributed to the defence playing ahead of him. Probably that's not been the most stable so far this season. And it's a relatively small sample size that I myself I'm judging him by. I looked into his promotion campaign with commentary and he was really good for that season. But does seem to be a little bit of a risk taker. I think we saw that with one of the goals he conceded against Middlesbrough where he tried rushing off his line. Going to put him into that average tier for the time being, but if he goes on and continues to improve, no reason why he can't be in that decent tier either. And then we get to Asmir Begovic. Now, I don't think a lot of people expected him to stick around at Bournemouth. The vast majority of people thought his time was up there after a couple of loan spells out, obviously most recently to AC Milan. His time at Bournemouth just seemed to be dwindling out and a lot of people thought that Mark Travers would be that number one goalkeeper this season. However, Begovic has been absolutely superb whenever he's played. He's currently got the best save percentage of any goalkeeper in the championship. And he's very much shown his quality so far this season for them. And as for Begovic, for me, makes it into that top tier. So as you can see, the three that we've got in there at the moment all being relegated goalkeepers that were in the Premier League last season. So I've got two more spaces to fill up now. Now, David Ray from Brentford's one goalkeeper who I think will be making it into a lot of people's top fives. And for me, he's very close. Ray is very much the modern goalkeeper whereby he's very comfortable playing out from the back. Fits into Brentford's model fantastically. They definitely missed him at the start of the season in the games that he did make. and since he has come back in, has put together a string of top performances. Last night against Swansea was really good for them. Although I do feel at times there is maybe one more mistake in him than there are some of the goalkeepers who I put in that elite tier. I rate him very highly but I also do think that every once in a while he can be caught out. Obviously we look at the player final from last year. I'm going to put him into that very good tier. I think he's very close to getting into a late. Another goalkeeper who I rate very highly is Stoke City's Adam Davis and he's recently picked up an injury which is quite the blow for them but I'm amazed that it took him as long as it did to get in ahead of Jack Butland from last season. It seemed like they were just giving Butland chance after chance but since Adam Davis has come in he's absolutely thrived in that role for Stoke. His clean sheet record there so far has been absolutely brilliant. I think he instills a lot of confidence in that back line which Butland failed to do so for me very good. Ryan Allsop at Wickham to be fair to him was thrust into quite a difficult situation where 
Wickham were facing a lot of shots in their opening few fixtures. He has considered the second most amount of goals so far this season with 16. But had it not been for him though, that number would have been a lot higher. And especially for their first few matches of the season, he was one of the few players who could take credit from that squad. In terms of where I place him on this list, compared to where we've got some of the goalkeepers, I'd probably put him on par with some of those others that we've got in the average tier. Next up then to Reading's Raphael. Probably one of the best bits of business that Reading have done in their past few transfer windows was picking this one up. So far this season, he's been brilliant for the Reading side, who currently sat top of the championship. Tonight, Preston do go up against Reading, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing him in action. And for me, I put him among the best in the league. I thought that last season he was brilliant for Reading, and so far this season, and he's been absolutely instrumental to their fantastic start to the season. For me, I've got Raphael in my top five keepers. So we get to Dylan Phillips, now the backup goalkeeper at Cardiff. I'd put Dylan Phillips into that decent category, you know. I thought that last season for Charlton, he was really good, one of their standout performers, and he deservedly so got his move to the championship. Then we get to Daniel Bentley, who can be a little bit hit and miss. Daniel Bentley's a really interesting one because sometimes he does very much go in sort of bursts of games where he's really good and then his performance level seem to drop a little bit. It's quite similar to Bristol City as a whole really, but when he is good, he is very good. In terms of some of the reflex saves, he's probably one of the most like agile goalkeepers in the league. If you saw his performance against Nottingham Forest away this season, you'd have seen some of the ridiculous saves he pulled off in that one. For me, Daniel Bentley, and between decent and very good, I will throw him into that very good category because when he is good, he's superb. Preston North End's number two, Conor Ripley. He is a clanging merchant, isn't he? Next up then to QPR, Senny Dieng, who is looking to stamp his authority as that number one now at Loftus Road. Now, for Dieng, I've got to say, I think he's been really good for QPR so far this season. He would have conceded a lot more goals without him. And to be honest, the vast majority of goals he's conceded so far this season have seemingly come from the penalty spot. He's not helped by what he's got in front of him. But in terms of his individual performances so far this season, I think he's done really well for QPR. I'd throw him into that decent tier. Next up to Birmingham City's Neil Etheridge, a massive upgrade for me on Lee Camp. I know he was a bit of a cult hero in the end, but Neil Etheridge is a goalkeeper with real pedigree and quality at this level. Interestingly enough, though, so far this season with goalkeepers over eight starts in the championship, he's faced the second fewest amount of shots so far this season, just second to Marcus Bettinelli. That's a testament to how rigid and structured they've been defensively so far, but he was absolutely wonderful for Cardiff in that season they had in the Premier League, but last season did lose that spot to Alex Smithies, although I do still rate Neil Etheridge very highly at this level, you know, he was caught out of the weekend by Jaden Stockley's wonder goal, but that's the only way you're really getting past it. For me, I'm going to throw him into that very good tier. I do rate him quite a bit. Then with Cameron Dawson at Sheffield Wednesday, he's a really odd one to judge because his performance levels can be really up and down. Sometimes he looks like a goalkeeper that's playing with a lot of confidence in terms of shot stopping and sort of those acrobatical saves that he's capable of pulling off. Sometimes looks like the real deal and then other times looks a bit like a rabbit in the headlights. He's obviously lost out on that number one shirt for the time being to Joe Wildsmith. I'd probably throw him into that average tier for me. Coincidentally, another goalkeeper that's still at Sheffield Wednesday that you might have forgotten about is Kieran Westwood. Over the years, no doubt one of the best goalkeepers in the championship, but for whatever reason, can't get a game at Wednesday at the moment, obviously due to his whole contract situation and everything surrounding that. Westwood's a little bit like the Mesut Ozil of the championship, isn't he, in terms of what's happened with him and Arsenal. I still think he's a decent goalkeeper, though. We're getting to a lot of championship sides still. Ainsley Pierce now at Blackburn Rovers did have a tough first couple of games, didn't he? But he did keep a clean sheet in midweek against his former side Middlesbrough. I'd probably throw him into average, but he does have time to, you know, work on his game. He is still a fairly young keeper. After that, we get to Freddie Woodman of Swansea City, another goalkeeper who I do rate very highly. I think that last season he was really good for Swansea, had some really good spells for them. Another one quite similar to Daniel Bentley, who's quite acrobatic with the saves that he's able to pull off. And at the age he's at as well, we'll only go on and get better. I'd throw him into that very good tier. And then we got Angus Gunn, now at Stoke City. Obviously, he's going to get some game time with Adam Davis being out injured and he's a tough one to judge at the moment. He was of course in net for that horror show Southampton had last season against Leicester and since making that move to Southampton doesn't quite seem to be the same goalkeeper that we saw a couple of years ago in the championship with Norwich who was absolutely brilliant. If Stoke are able to build them up there's still a fantastic goalkeeper in there. I'm going to throw him into that decent category for the time being but we'll see what he's made of. It's up then to Cardiff City's Alex Smithies and I think for a time we all forgot how good Smithies actually was because after he made that move over from QPR where he was really highly rated to Cardiff he went to sit on the bench there for a little bit didn't he as that number two behind Neil Etheridge but last season since claiming that number one spot 
spot for me. He's right up there in terms of championship goalkeepers. We've already seen so far this season what he's been capable of. I mean, that unbelievable save he pulled off against Bournemouth to tip that Dom Solanke shot, I think, onto the crossbar. And he, for me, takes that final spot in that elite category as one of the top five goalkeepers. Mark Travers at Bournemouth been their number two so far this season. Did play on the opening day against Blackburn, but let in two in that one. Again, it's a very small sample size for this one. I'd probably throw him into the average tier for the time being. Barnsley's Jack Walton. I'm not 100% sold on him so far. He's, he's also going to go into that average sort of tier for me. So those are my final rankings for championship goalkeepers. But if I go ahead and move a couple of them around if I had to, I think I'm going to move Coventry's Morosi up to the decent tier. I think that given the amount of shots he's actually faced so far this season, it's probably a bit harsh to judge him on goals conceded. So he's going to go up a tier. And Ben Hamer as well, also given credit to, has improved for Huddersfield. So he probably makes it into the average tier for me now. But those are my final rankings, guys. So do leave in the comments down below what do you make of them all. So my top five goalkeepers being Ben Foster, Tim Krull, Asmir Begovic, Raphael and Alex Smithies. Get your top five in the comments down below. But apart from that, guys, that will not wrap it up for today's video. So if you did go on to enjoy, make Make sure to leave a like make sure to get all your thoughts in the comments down below and stick around and subscribe for a bit of regular championship content but apart from that thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next one